Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Widener Show. If you like the Mike Widener Show and you want to make your own podcast, well, let me tell you about Anchor. First of all, it's free. Secondly, there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. You can also add any song from Spotify directly to your episodes. The possibilities are endless. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you. You can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, many more. You can also make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So download the free Anchor app or go to Anchor FM to get start the mike wagner show is powered by sonic web studios hi this is mia mohsen zia also known as mia no time for love check out my latest book missing available in print and ebook format on amazon it's now time for the mike wagner show powered by sonic web studios visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs the mike wagner show can be heard on spreaker spotify iHeartRadio, youtube itunes anchor fm radio public and the mike wagner show.com mike brings you great guests and interesting people from all across the globe so sit back relax and enjoy another great episode of the mike wagner show Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by SoundCloud Studios. Visit our line at SoundCloudStudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. SoundCloud Studios is the answer. SoundCloud Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at SoundCloudStudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show, get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, international war ring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. Takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love will be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson has garnered great reviews in Eve 11 and Doris by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today for Girls Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com on over 30 podcast platforms, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also, Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, Apple Music, and more. Coming soon to HamiltonRadio.net every Thursday night at 9. And don't forget to take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. For great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. T-shirts, pop sockets, throw pillows, tote bags, hoodies. Makes great gifts 24-7. Go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia for great books like Missing, Once, and Wrinkles. Also, T-shirts, pop sockets, hoodies, phone cases, and more. Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia. Check it out today. Also, support the Mike Widener Show on Anchor FM. Hey, pal, themikewidenershow.com. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com at the Mike Widener Show. Make sure you do so today. We're here with two terrific gentlemen, and they're actually three offered authors, and one is... um. Won't be with us uh, today here on the Mike Widener Show. They're all seasoned veterans in the L.A. creative community, and they come from culturally rich uh, minority backgrounds. Two are DJs, and one is a dancer. And they're all connected through mutual love of EDM. We'll talk about that. And we have a gentleman who's a founder of uh, Catapult World, and the other is a DJ producer born in East L.A. And, of course, um, we have a gentleman uh, who won't be with us. He was born in the Philippines, raised in Santa Ana. He's also a dancer. And they have a new book, which is uh, about struggling DJ in his 20s, searching for love, but far beyond reach. And uh, would it be his career or would it be the love? We'll talk about that. It's called Love Hurts. Live, ladies and gentlemen, from the Plus Studios in beautiful downtown Los Angeles. We have the uh, authors of um, the book Love Hurts, ladies and gentlemen, the multi-talented Kevin Flores. And Aaron Mastow. Guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having us. And Aaron, it's great to have you on board as well. Thank you for having us. We're stoked to be here. It's a pleasure. <laughs> and Aaron, it's okay if you say something too, so don't worry, okay? So <laughs> whatever and, uh, Kev says, I'm just gonna copy him. Oh, please don't do that. It's like, come on, be a little creative here. But anyway, we're, we're, here, we're here to talk about your book, uh, Love Hurts, but uh, let's talk about you guys as seasoned veterans in the L.A. creative community. You come from culturally rich uh, minority backgrounds, and um, 
And of course, uh, Aaron, you're a founder of Catapult World. And uh, Kevin, you're a DJ producer born in East LA. And your partner, Rodolfo, who's not with us, born in the Philippines and raised in Santa Ana, California, is also a dancer. And of course, you guys uh, have a mutual love for EDM. We'll talk about how you guys came together. Your new book talks about a struggling DJ named Taj in his 20s, searching for love, but far beyond reach, living a shadow of a family, and um, later meets a, a wonderful lady in a mesmerizing encounter, but then... Things happen. We'll talk about the book and what can we learn from it. And before getting to all that, guys, uh, tell us how it first got started. It first got started uh, about 10 years ago. We were brainstorming an idea. Uh, this was at the time my mother was diagnosed with breast cancer, and I was going through a tumultuous time and very emotional. And, um, you know, I had this concept that I presented to Kevin and Rodolfo about a, a struggling DJ who, you know, find, discovers this frequency that starts healing his mother. Um, and, you know, after some fine tuning, we dis decided to take that concept and actually go into a more positive comedic route. Um, at the same time, my mom was healing from her cancer. So we, we made it more about a, a, a struggling DJ who discovers the love frequency and, mm. and how his career takes off from there. And that's how it came to be. We, we wrote the movie script uh, first. A few years later, uh, we started thinking about and strategizing the next play would be to write the book, an audio book, an ebook. And here we are. Mm. That's certainly amazing. And Kevin, you can also put your uh, two cents as well, too, about um, collaboration and a uh, little, little bit about the book, too. Yeah, it all happened uh, really organically. We were uh, sitting around one evening, and as Aaron said, he shared the story uh, about his mother and the idea he, that sprung from, from that crisis. And um, yeah, we just started recording on the iPhone once we started kind of shooting ideas out. And we were just kind of going back and forth, putting dialogue of what, what this character could say and what would their, their reaction be. And it just kind of unfolded. We had a beginning, middle, and end. Uh, Aaron learned final draft and started putting all those hours of audio into a cohesive uh, piece of work that we could build off of. Mm, that's really interesting. You can do things off the iPhone and everything else. And uh, how'd you three uh, all first came together? Well, we've known each other. Ke Kevin and I have known each other for over 15 years um, through the music industry, through music production and I met him at the Musicians Institute uh, while he was uh, in a recording session and I met Rodolfo uh, man it's been 20 25 years wow it's been very long we met him uh, I met him sneaking into electronic music rave uh, festivals when I was young <laughs> we couldn't afford getting in we would sneak in we would find ourselves on the opposite side of a uh, the dance circle break dancing and I would see this guy, Rodolfo, um, progressing constantly at events. And I was like, is this guy copying my moves? Because we had similar moves. And huh. we, we just constantly um, saw each other progressing and had mutual respect for each other's style. Until one day I was like, hey, we're both getting progressing as dancers. Why don't we form a crew and have more power in numbers? And later we started coming up with concepts for movies and TV. And here we are. Hmm. That's really interesting. And uh, Kevin, how about your take on it? Yeah, Rodolfo is actually my eldest son's uh, uncle. Oh, wow. So, so that's our connection. Um, and Aaron and I, we've known each other for probably over 15 years. Uh, like you said, we met at Musicians Institute. Um, we began collaborating. He was doing hip hop music. Uh, he was also uh, running a clothing line. And it was really uh, urban and hip hop inspired. So he'd always be hooking us up and um, yeah, it just kept growing the collaboration. And here we are now uh, promoting a book. Hmm. That's rather interesting as well, too. And let's get to Aaron here about uh, you being a founder of Catapult World and more. And, uh, you know, tell us, tell us how you uh, found a Catapult World. And uh, also, first of all, tell us how you got started in the uh, business. Catapult World, I founded Catapult World, I think, 2015 or 2014, but we've been developing content since 1998, 99. Um, Catapult World is a creative agency 
uh, and content creation production company. We specialize in content uh, marketing as well as creative direction. And um, I got I got involved with creativity at, at a, the young age of maybe four or five when my grandmother started introducing me to different forms and mediums of art from painting to journaling script uh, um, from from clay to uh, stained glass. She, she taught me everything. She let me paint on t-shirts when I was really young. Nice. And, and I, as I got older, I, I became a little more passionate about creative writing and music production. And that's kind of how it slowly came to be. Mm -hmm. And what was that one precise moment that simply influenced you into what you're doing for the rest of your career? You know, it was, it was a stream of many years of just being present with creativity and art and embracing the fact, acknowledging I was aware of uh, my love and passion for art. And, and over years, it, it just grew and grew. And it's, and it's something that I could never deny. Hmm. I know what, it's my, my, it's, I know it's my purpose here on, on earth is to be creative and spread uh, joy through creativity. Mm -hmm. And who are some of your favorite artists and also some of your like, you Others like singers, performers, and everything. Who are some of your um, influences that you uh, grew up with? I think a lot of my influences would be painters like Picasso, who was going against the norm at the time with his abstract style and um, a, a very trendsetter. Same with Salvador Dali. Um, also, pro beat producers in, in, in the hip hop industry like Dr. Dre was a heavy in influence on me. Um, there's so many different people. I would say a lot of family members, including my mother and, and her battle with cancer was a big inspiration and influence with me and, and my older brother as well, who's a, a trained glass blower and metal oh. welder. And wow. we used to be in the same hip hop group as well. So a lot of inspiration. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is so interesting. I gotta say that. And um, Kevin, you're pretty much a, you're a DJ producer born in uh, East Los Angeles and everything. And um, you also had some influence as well too. And um, you know, being engineer and uh, all that stuff. And um, you know, tell us how you first got started in the business. Yeah, I didn't even think I was gonna be making music my career um, in high school or before that. Um, I thought I was going to get into political science and either get into education or something, something to do with politics. Um, and it just didn't pan out that way. I decided that I wanted to do music um, and I needed a foundation. So I went to Musicians Institute to learn uh, recording engineering. And um, that was great. I got a lot out of it. Um, once I started uh, recording different artists, trial and error, I started, you know, working my chops and, um, I've been able to work with a lot of really cool artists. Um, the journey has been really uh, awesome. And now I'm venturing into writing. Uh, I think that's really where my heart is at right now. Uh, just creating, uh, telling stories. Um, and yeah, really excited. Hmm. It sounds exciting what you're doing as well, Kevin. And what was that one precise moment that simply influenced you in, into what you're doing for the rest of your career? Well, for music, it has to be when I discovered hip hop, even though I didn't realize I was going to be doing music as a career, it, it was uh, really impactful once I started getting into the, the beats and the music, you know, from Notorious B.I.G., uh, Dr. Dre, uh, the West Coast artists that were coming out. I mean, there's just too many influences to name. But uh, just something about the music really captivated me. And uh, the aspects of storytelling that come with hip hop also influenced me as a writer. <clears throat> the use of wordplay, uh, double entendres, uh, descriptive, uh, you know, creative ways of, of explaining or telling the story. Uh, a lot of that is derived uh, from the spoken word in hip hop. And that's influenced me as a writer as well. That's really interesting how you guys all came together, Dr. Dre and Notorious B.I.G. and everything else. And um, where are some of your other uh, favorite singers, songwriters, musicians, and uh, producers growing up? Um, there's a producer that ha influenced me heavily uh, who passed away, uh, I believe, in 2006 or seven. His name's uh, Jay Dilla from Detroit, um, and his music 
played a big part in in how I approach music production. So if I had to name one um, influence in particular for music, it'd have to be him. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting as well, too. And you guys all coming together and writing about the new book. We'll talk about the book, Love Hurts. <coughs> but first, to listen to the Mike Widener Show at the MikeWidenerShow.com, powered by SonicWeb Studios. Visit online at SonicWebStudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. SonicWeb Studios is the answer. <coughs> Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. It's 1-800-303-3960 or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show, get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. <coughs> also, time to give official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, international warring author, Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast-paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia. Available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. Takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love will be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. <coughs> missing by Mia Molson has garnered great reviews and Eva Lovin and George Pa Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forbes Riley, and Manales. So grab your copy today for Goes Missing by Mia Molson Zia. Available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at the themikewidenershow.com and over 30 podcast platforms. Coming soon to hamiltonradio.net every Thursday night at 9. Check out the Mike Widener Show and more. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. For great gift ideas, go to amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to amazon.com slash Zia. <laughs> for great books like Missing, Once and Wrinkles, also merchandise and more, Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia. Check it out today. I'll support the Mike Widener Show on Anchor FM, PayPal, the Mike Widener Show.com, and you can buy me a coffee, which really tastes good right now. Buy me a coffee.com at the Mike Widener Show. Make sure you do so today. We're here with um, two wonderful authors, and a uh, third uh, won't be with us today, but uh, we'll include him as well. Rodolfo uh, Tagle the third. We've got. Um, Two other authors, Kevin Flores and Aaron Masta on the Mike Widener Show, talking about the book Love Hurts. And um, tell us more about the book and um, what inspired you guys to uh, collaborate and write. It's like, this sounds like a really good book. Yeah, Love Hurts is the story of a struggling DJ. Uh, he discovers the love frequency. So it's like the movie Weird Science from the 80s meets The Hangover, set in the <laughs> world of electronic music. Uh, so if you're a fan of comedy, unapologetic humor and romance, then Love Hurts is for you. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Kevin? Yeah, it's a story of a true underdog. Um, the DJ, his name is Taj Das. Taj as in Taj Mahal and Das, D-A-S. And it's kind of he's kind of a nerdy version of Sylvester Stallone in the movie Rocky. Mm -hmm. um, and he does everything he can to prove everybody wrong, including his, uh, his father and uh, the people that uh, don't support him uh, when he's, you know, doing his shows, which uh, happens in one of the first uh, couple of chapters. He has a terrible debut performance, uh, but he doesn't give up, comes back and blows him away. Hmm. And what was it? What was that one moment that inspired you to write Love Hurts? Was it somebody that you knew along there or was it just brainstorming or was it just like, you know, a story that you guys got, you know, like in the papers, the Internet or anything like that? I think it's a it's a story that uh, that we can young adults can relate to coming of age, um, trying to find their place in in society and, and just growing up being accepted. Um a lot of young adults are passionate about their dreams. And, and this particular main character, Taj, spelled T-A-J, um, he, he's passionate about DJing. And sometimes our parents or people around us might not understand or might not see the vision of us being successful with things that we're passionate about. And so I feel we wanted to write from a place um, that people could relate to, but also give it that fictional aspect of him discovering this frequency that all of a sudden starts attracting women to him, which is the love frequency and how his career takes off from there. Mm. Kevin, go ahead. You can say something too. And uh, guys, you want to jump in any time, feel free to do so. So it's an open forum. Kevin, go, go ahead and jump in on this one here. Yeah. Um, 
like Aaron said, it's uh, really relatable, even if you're not a fan of electronic music or DJing in particular. Um, the struggles and a lot of the underlying story uh, is something that a lot of people have gone through in one way or another, whether it's been uh, struggling to find love, um, you know, arguing with your parents about the decisions you want to make for yourself, um, struggles with friends and jealousy, uh, ego spiraling out of control. These are all things that I think people have gone through in one form or another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you guys talk about the love frequency as well, too. Uh, do you have like a certain number of, of the frequency as well, too, or is it just simply just love in general? Because I talk to some people about frequency, they go by like 432, which has been the um the common state, and sometimes it goes up to 440 and even to 5G as well, too. What number would you describe the uh, love frequency at? This particular frequency that Taj uh, discovers is 639 hertz. Now, this frequency is a real frequency that resonates at the same rate the heart chakra vibrates. So this is something that is actual uh, reality um, to a certain extent. And so we play off this component of 639 hertz as the, the love frequency he discovers. And slowly after a couple romantic encounters, he realizes what he's discovered. Hmm. That's really interesting. And of course, uh, his love interest, uh, Janet, just happens to uh, come in the picture in a mesmerizing encounter. And of course, you know, things happen afterwards. It's like, you know, you know, we don't want to give away too much of it. It's almost like, you know, one thing after another. And of course, you know, like, like and of course, it turns out that uh, sometimes you um you either come away with a girl or lose a girl. And uh, maybe just a little bit about uh, his love interest, Janet, and uh, how, it, how it came about. Yeah, uh, we we thought about the fact that the love frequency attracts all the women, but our protagonist, Taj, he struggled to find any kind of interest from the opposite sex his whole life. So we were put in with the situation of figuring out how can we present a character that, you know, maybe likes him for who he is, or is she influenced by the sound? And so they develop a, a connection throughout the story, even as Taj's career starts taking off. There's still constant communication. Um, and then we kind of find out at the end if uh, he actually finds true love. Would you say, would that be like love at first sight or more of a opposite attract or just one of those things that takes time? I think when he first sees Janet, he's DJing and he sees her in the crowd. Everyone is going crazy for his music at this time. His frequency is already, he's already putting it on top of his beats. He's playing them out, out at uh, clubs and he sees her. So I, I, I do feel it was um, something, something like a love at first sight mm. when he first sees Janet. Yes. Okay. And, and what was the frequency uh, in the clubs? You talk about 635 uh, frequency for love. What was the frequency in the club? Well, it's it, the frequency 639 uh, with a nine. And he puts that frequency on top of his beats. And so no matter what beat he's playing, he has already embedded that frequency on top of his beats. So in the club, it's going crazy for him, debaucherous. And the speakers are playing his beats under underlaid with the 639 hertz frequency and in the audiobook uh we actually did some sound design and we gave our interpretation of what that frequency might actually sound like so if you download the audiobook you'll be able to get the full experience and there's actual uh, electronic music production layered throughout the story whenever taj is uh, doing a performance or in his studio Mm hmm. And, and of course, I guess the big question is, uh, will Taj ever find a uh, true and meaningful love or will he, in, in uh, Janet or will he, would he find it uh, in, in his career? I guess that's kind of a big question. Yeah, that's... I think that's that's kind of uh, where we lead up to. Um, I would I don't want to spoil the story, but uh, it's definitely an unexpected twist at the end that um, it's really heartwarming. And, um, you know, I think it's 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 worth uh reading and, and getting to the end. Mm -hmm. And Taja's, Taja's like the, the, the Luke Skywalker, Skywalker character in a, in a sense where he has this power now and is he gonna use it for the dark side or the light side? He has this 
you know, confrontation mentally on what he's going to do with this. And, and so as his career develops, um, you know, the, the listener or the reader is going to really truly understand what route he's going to take. Okay. And what do you want the readers to uh, get out of the book? We want, first of all, cause it's a romantic comedy. We want people to laugh. Um, <laughs> I think the world needs it right now. It's such a interesting time in the world. It's very intense and, you know, people, I wouldn't, I'm not going to say everyone, but there's a lot of stress. There's a lot of just anxiety. And we want for, we want people to take a step back and remember to laugh. I think laughing is so good for the soul. Um, we also want people to take away that, you know, there's joy and, in, in, in things that you are truly passionate about and never, never lose your youthful outlook on life. And, and just make sure you, you put your heart into whatever you want to do in life. Okay. Yeah, there's a touching moment in the book uh, between Taj and his mother, who's like his biggest supporter. Um, and she just tells him, you know, no matter what happens in life, always do what you love. And I think that's the overarching theme of the book. And that what we want to communicate to the reader is, you know, never lose uh, that fire, the inspiration to uh, follow your, your dreams. Mm -hmm. and of course, you mentioned about being a comedy as well, too. Maybe just... Uh... Highlight or two, some of the comedic moments, uh, you know, Tosh had where it was like falling over something or saying the wrong thing or anything like that. So, Kev, do you want to touch on that? Well, is, is this uh, podcast rated G or R? <laughs> <laughs> it's your yeah. call. I'm just a narrator. So, <laughs> um, I mean, there's so many funny spots. Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty raunchy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it actually it actually makes me blush because Mike, you're actually the first uh, interviewer to actually ask us like, hey, name a funny part in the book. So it, it actually makes me giggle just thinking of of what to pull. But um, believe it or not, some of them are actually inspired for for real life. Uh, here's opening opening scene in the in the book. So Taj is in the club, um, the local club where his famous or local celebrity DJ is his friend and. They're all hanging out in the VIP area. And, um, you know, he's like his friend Skyler is like the ladies man. So he is, has the girls all next to him. And one of the girls is telling a story and Taj just kind of awkwardly like leans in and wants to hear what's going on. And uh, this girl is telling a story about how she met a guy. They had they were having uh, she was cooking spaghetti. And all of a sudden uh, he came up from behind her. And started eating her ass. <laughs> <laughs> Not the spaghetti. Oh my god! Yeah, I yeah. was looking forward to eating spaghetti. Who, who would have thought, right? <laughs> and and uh, <laughs> and so um, the music cuts out real quick. And Taj's first uh, reaction is like, "Can I get your number?" And everyone's just looking at him like, "Really? Like that's what that's what you're gonna say?" And she's like, "Uh." uh how about I just get yours? And he was just, he just, you know, he's kind of like so naive and, and kind of oblivious that that was totally uncalled for. And, and um, yeah, so then, you know, the night's over, everyone, you know, get, gets back to their cars, kind of leaving him behind. Like, and then he, he's uh, in the car with his friends and he's like, yo, there's like an after hour spot. Like we should go there right now. And Taj is like, mm. No, I think I'm going to wait for Nikki to call me. So he's <laughs> that, oh, yeah, she's she's totally into me. Like, I made the right move. So that's kind of just a little glimpse uh, of the kind of comedy that's in there. And when like, it comes to comedy, and then when it comes, sorry. To, no, 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 sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. When it comes to comedy, we're like, we want to approach comedy like Mike Tyson throwing a punch. We're inspired by old school comedic acts like Eddie Murphy, Richard Pryor, um, George Carlin. And it's, 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 it's rather, you know, it leaves you in a state where you're like, wow, this is offensive. But, you know, we, we pull from, from that old school style of comedy where it's no holds barred. Hmm. That's interesting. I thought you would give him like a Will Smith slap or something. That's what she would done. And you want my <laughs> what? Whack. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my gosh. I think I'm ready to go watch some comedy. And, um, <laughs> you know, you know, I, yeah. I think we're on the subject of the comedy. Who are some of your favorite comedians growing up? You know, I didn't think about that for some reason. <laughs> I mean, yeah, as I mentioned, Eddie Murphy, definitely. Um, Richard Pryor, George Carlin is definitely one of my favorites because he approached it 
you know, with so much reality behind his his jokes and and it's stuff that it's not always fantasy. It's 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 things that are actually happening in the world politically and and culturally. So I loved him. Um, modern Colin, day, uh, he was a real he was a real wordsmith, definitely. Yes. Go ahead, Kev. Too. Let's. What about you? Uh, comedy, like. If I'm not listening to, you know, politics or learning about finance, a comedy is my go-to. Um, so I love comedians from today, uh, Tony Hinchcliffe. Uh, he has a great uh, podcast called uh, Kill Tony. That's a, it's a live podcast that they broadcast like two weeks later. Um, it's incredible. Uh, a comedian from L.A., uh, Felipe Esparza is awesome. Yeah. Aaron and I. Aaron and I has, have gone to his, like so many of his shows. Um, he's a really, really funny guy. Um, and then some of the greats, uh, you know, like Richard Pryor, Carlin, you know, um, even, you know, Dave Chappelle, he's been, you know, he's, he's a legend. He, he started in the nineties. So, so he's definitely not and like, Chris one Rock. of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all know who Chris Rock is by now, if you didn't know. Uh, but he was if you great. don't know who Chris Rock is, we'll slap you. <laughs> yeah, then you're living <laughs> under a rock for sure. Uh, <laughs> Will you? <laughs> yeah, and then also just to cap it off, just because they're they just influenced me comedically. Uh, um, Louis C.K. Uh, I love his comedy, his dark humor, um, and and I like uh, Aziz Ansari too. Uh, actually, he was the inspiration for the character Tosh. Um, He's obviously too old to play him now, but uh, when we were first crafting the idea of Taj, we kind of were thinking of the mannerisms and the way things uh, Aziz would say from listening to his comedy routines. Okay. That sounds very amazing. Where can we find Love Hurts at? Kev, do you want to take that one? Yeah. Um, it's it's on paperback, ebook, and audiobook. So Audible, Kindle, Amazon, um, any of your favorite platforms to download audio, um, it'll be there. Um, and yeah, please visit uh, lovehurtsbook.com uh, to stay up to date with uh, you know any announcements or future projects. We will yeah, certainly get to yeah. You can get to us, get to learn more about the story there. Um, learn about our bios, our backgrounds at lovehurtsbook.com, as well as on Instagram. Follow our antics and all the awesome stuff that, that's happening constantly, daily with people and community supporting the book at love hurts book. We will certainly check that out. And what's coming up for the authors of love hurts. We'll find out just one minute. You listen to the Mike Wagner show at the Mike Wagner show.com powered by sonic web studios. Visit online at sonic web studios.com for all he needs. Also brought to you by our official sponsor, the Mike Wagner show, international war ring author, me and most of missing available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. And we'll be back with the authors of uh, love hurts. Um, Aaron Mostow and Kevin Flores. After this time, up. the Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1 800 303 3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host and I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written. It's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter and it's very well done. I'm going to highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia. He is the author of Missing. And I want to give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing, available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Hey, hey, this is Ray Powers, and boy, are you in luck. Right place, right time. Tuned in to the Mike Wagner Show. You heard me. We're back with Aaron Mostel and Kevin Flores, the authors of Love Hurts here on the Mike Widener Show. And um, guys, uh, he's been very, learned a lot from you guys and just very inspiring how you guys all came together, Love Hurts and more. What else can we expect from you guys in 2022 and beyond? 
Well, firstly, we're just so stoked and very appreciative of being in the present moment. You know, a lot of times everyone's like, okay, what's the next thing? We just released a book and what are you going to do next? But we just want to take some time to say thank you and, and, and pat ourselves on the back, an accomplishment that took um, over 10 years to put out uh, the script and the book. The book is the first to release and come mid-May, we're actually, finally, we have good representation to take the movie script for Love Hurts and walk it into all the streaming platforms and so we're uh, going to be pitching the movie script. And then in regards to the future, we're, we're looking at the metaverse. We're looking at the, the future of, of these characters coming to life um, off the paper. And whether that be animation or whether that be augmented reality, the, the, future, is, the future is now. And um, we're excited about it. And we're certainly looking forward to it as well, guys. And who do you consider biggest influences in your careers? Biggest influence, um, well, for sure, it's be my parents. Uh, they immigrated from Ecuador in the 80s, and they made a lot of sacrifices uh, for me to have the luxury to dream. Believe it or not, uh, there's a lot of people in other countries that live day to day, and to dream about making music or writing a book, it's just not in the cards. So I have to recognize them first and foremost uh, for their sacrifices and for allowing me to, uh, to be where I'm at now. I love it. Yeah, That's amazing. Say, and Aaron? I would say the biggest influences would be my grandfather, my, my mom's dad, who, who fought um, on behalf of the U.S. Army. He's from the Philippines, and he, um, he did whatever it, he could he could do whatever it took to get my mom and all of her brothers and sisters here to the, to the U S and um, if it wasn't for his drive and fight it, and him being a hero, we wouldn't be here. And then also my, my dad's mother, uh, Mira Pelzig, who instilled art and creativity in me. And um, those are my two biggest influences, but my whole family has been such an influence and, as well as my close friends. So besides other idols and people, all of these celebrities that you look up to, it, for me, it's it's always been close to home. And those are the people who've been with me along this journey, motivating me. And those are my biggest influences. That's certainly amazing. You have a really good background there as well, too. And what's the best advice you guys can give to anybody at this point? Um, do what you love. Um, if you do what you enjoy. Uh, you're never really actually working. Um, and don't be afraid to invest in yourself. Um, those are the best uh, parting words I can give. Okay. And Aaron? Best words of advice for my listeners, for everyone here is appreciate the now. Um, just wake up grateful every day. Take advantage of the time we have because time moves quick. So if you want to do something, don't procrastinate, get it done. Um, it's okay to fail because all entrepreneurs out there, you have to fail in order to succeed and just keep pushing forward. Don't, don't get knocked down and, and give up. You, you have to, if you want something in life, you have to be determined. You have to be resilient and um, just, just have fun with whatever you're doing. If you're in a job that you don't enjoy, quit because you, we're put on this earth to enjoy what we do and, and make the best of it. Mm -hmm. Very good advice. That was very amazing, guys. Once again, we're with the authors of Love Hurts, Aaron Mostow and Kevin Flores here on the Mike Wagner Show. Guys, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely fantastic. Looking forward to having you again soon. Make sure you keep us up to date. Keep in touch. We'd love to have you back. And once again, tell us about your upcoming projects. What's your website? How do people contact or can people purchase or check out Love Hurts and more? Yeah, so we'll probably be working on uh, either the follow-up to Love Hurts or a spinoff um, of some characters in the book that, you know, have a nice little um, moment with Taj and they really stand out. So we might do a story about them um, and just exploring ways to uh, expand the Love Hurts universe. Okay. And Aaron? Check out our website, lovehurtsbook.com. Um from there, you'll be able to click directly onto Amazon, Audible, 
Kindle. You know, the great thing about this book is it exists in different formats. So if you're tangible, you want something, you want something physical and, and tactile, you can read the physical paperback book. If you want, if you're on the go and you need to, to be able to absorb it more with your ears and you listen to it with our audiobook experience. And if you, you like to be on your computer, you can um, uh, read it with our Love Hurts ebook. Um, so those are those are uh, the the formats that that I would recommend. Um, our website I, I mentioned, um, and that's that's about it. And our social media, uh, everything yeah. is uh, Love Hurts Book. Um, all the handles, um, YouTube, um, SoundCloud. Please uh, check out SoundCloud. We put out uh, a soundtrack, six songs that are featured on the audiobook. Um, so free download. Yeah, check that out. Yep. Get the get the good music. Okay. We shout certainly... out to all the producers. Shout out to all the producers who showed us love and, and gave us contributed their music to the audio book. Yeah, Epi love, Epiker, Frank Royal, Mansion, um, Tony Kim, uh, Noah Loman, um yeah. Outer Point. Uh just we really, really appreciate uh the contributions. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, certainly amazing as well, too. And guys, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely fantastic. Looking forward to having you again soon. Make sure you keep us up to date. Keep in touch. We'll have a back. We wish you all best. And guys, you've got a great future ahead of you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. And if it wasn't for, for individuals like you who are giving this amazing opportunity and creating this platform for creatives to share, we're, you know, our, our story is not told. So big up to the Mike Wagner Show. Boop, boop, boop. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention The Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host. And I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written, it's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter and it's very well done. I'm gonna highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia. He is the author of Missing. And I want to give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing, available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to The Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and themikewagnershow.com. Please support our program with your donations at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again next time for another great episode of The Mike Wagner Show.